You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We have some exciting music events coming up we want to share with you, and they're even coming to the St. Louis area. So looking forward to sharing that with you in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Great music tour right around the corner here in February. Joining us today, Dr. Jeff Held, professor of music and music director of the orchestras for Concordia University, Irvine. He also serves as assistant dean for the College of Arts and Sciences for Music and Arts at Concordia University, Irvine. Dr. Held, welcome to the coffee hour. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I'm excited to talk about the upcoming tour for the Concordia University Irvine Symphony Orchestra. Before we get to that, just a a brief history of music and particularly the orchestras at Concordia University Irvine for us. Well, Concordia University Irvine, like the other Concordias, has a long music history. When I came to the university 18 years ago, we were well known for the choir and handbell program. And I came on to start the band program, which I started and soon after started a symphony orchestra. It was a long, slow process to talk talented string players into coming to a small upstart program, but you win, you know, one out of five students at a time. And over the years, we've developed what is now a leading Christian college symphony orchestra. And we're really happy to be bringing it to the St. Louis region from February 25th through March 1st, coming up very soon. Yeah, this is very exciting. The Concordia Irvine doesn't tour a whole lot in the Midwest, does it? Well, it's pretty expensive to get out of California. (laughs) Sure, (laughs) We are trying very hard to be seen and get out and, and do music ministry in the Midwest. The Wind Orchestra was in St. Louis about, I think, 11 years ago. We've come a long way since then. I mean, we've developed one of the leading music programs in Southern California. And the leading way that we actually are heard outside of our area is on PBS now. In the last three years, we've been developing made-for-TV Christmas specials that run for a full hour with a lot of original music filmed on location here at Concordia Irvine in our new music building and our studios here. And it's really taken off. It's on 75% of the markets across the nation. And it often airs in prime time right next to St. Olaf and the Tabernacle Choir. Now, I guess I should say, since you're based in St. Louis, one of the places it's not yet is St. Louis. So maybe your listeners can help with that for next year. That would be great. I would love to watch that. That is that is really cool that, that you have that opportunity to share music in that way. So how is music and orchestra a part, import, an important part of the student life at Concordia Irvine? Well, the student life at Concordia Irvine is driven first and foremost by a Christian mission. We want to put students in an atmosphere where they experience the, the power and wonder of the Word of God and what Jesus Christ has done for us. We're very true to the Lutheran confessions here. On the music side, we have a really amazing opportunity. We have, speaking of the orchestra, we have an orchestra that can play pretty much all of the professional repertoire, and it's a thrill to do it. And we can, we could take a pure conservatory approach, but that's not who we are as Concordia. So, you know, this concert shows that a, a different approach. It takes some of the best professional repertoire, like Aaron Copeland's Appalachian Spring or the Christopher Rouse Flute Concerto, Bach Cantata, and it packages it in a way that speaks with some meaning to the people listening. I used Bach and sprinkled him throughout this concert so that there's where nobody preaches in the music world better than Bach. He's called the fifth evangelist, and his music often talks about contented peace, vergnute, and this concept fits really nicely in this program. I put a program together that it starts with solo voices. If you think about being content, it's often an internal thing. We live in community, but at the end of the day, we have to be internally contented. And we hear in the opening of the concert some solo voices that, for the most part, are not too content. There's a really wild flute concerto, for example. It just, you're not quite sure where it's going or what key it's going to land in. And also even a Bach 
solo violin fugue. A fugue is like a Rubik's cube. It's, it's a puzzle that a musician is working out on the spot. So these things, we, we kind of feel that, that sense of uncontentment through them. And then we start working towards ideas of contentment. The, the main part of this concert is Aaron Copeland's Appalachian Spring. That's a long work that is considered to be, it's often described as the piece that most reflects the American sound in orchestral music. I chose that because knowing that we were going to the Midwest, I thought, why not do something with, with a good American sense to it? And so we ended up making that the centerpiece of the concert. And it has a lot of sounds of contentment and joy and a lot of dance and just the wonderful things that Aaron Copeland does. But if that's the centerpiece of the concert, the anchor of the concert is the music of Bach. And we ultimately land in this really gorgeous aria from his 170th cantata. And it speaks, ah, spirit filled with harmony. When will the promised land of heaven be given to you? Contented peace, the beloved delight of the soul. Only there, there is heavenly harmony. And Bach does it in just, <clears throat> it's really, in this aria, <clears throat> it's one of, <clears throat> excuse me, it's one of Bach's really most beautiful melodies. He takes three notes that just repeat, da, da, da. And he has the players play him on a, on a connected bow. And it's just this beautiful, soft sound. But the melody is so perfect, it sounds like, of course, that's where it goes next. And it just moves into these just beautiful, florid sounds. And it's, it's, the, it's the mark of musical genius that it sounds like it must go there. But it seems like only Bach figured out how to do that. And so it's just a, it's a wonderful spot in a concert. We answer that with a hymn. One of the things I love to do with the orchestra is to turn to some of our alumni composers and have them orchestrate hymn settings, often at climactic moments in our concert. And this is exactly what happens here. We have the, the great Rayfon Williams hymn, For All the Saints, and Alex Giebert, who graduated from Concordia and is the of music at St. John's Lutheran Church in Orange, is a very accomplished composer, and he's written some of the very best music we've played. And we have a brand new setting of this hymn, which the congregation, the audience will get to sing with us. And it's really fantastic. I just got the music a couple days ago. We're sight reading it tonight, looking forward to it. But why is that hymn there? Well, that's a, a, a Christian response to this whole idea of peaceful contentment, the end of a long life lived. And it closes with words that I, I think really hearken back to the Copeland from earth's wide bounds, from ocean's furthest coast. That's an Americana description right there. It could be described as such through gates of pearl streams in the countless host, we turn to heavenly glory, singing to father, son, and Holy ghost. Alleluia. What a great climax of the concert. And then we actually, it's not the end of the concert though. We turn back to the Christopher Rouse flute concerto and play what in my mind is one of the most this elegy, it's, it, it's look back on life and is life always roses and well-lived? No, not necessarily. And this music speaks to it. I mean, the music is utterly beautiful, but it's also at the same time painful. It's distressed and ultimately it's contented. It's really an amazing work. And then we, we close that out on this just super simple, beautiful cadence that as a conductor, I just want to last forever. And then we will have some silence and then we'll finish with a celebration. John Williams, uh, his music from far and away, which is Irish infused. It's a movie about a story of Irish immigrants and it's a great American piece. That's a good partner to the Aaron Copeland. And it is in the, it's full of beauty and spectacular cinematic music. And it's a great way to close out the concert. And by the way, happy birthday to John Williams. He turns 91 today as we tape this. Wow. wow. I'm so excited. Uh, this lineup <laughs> is fantastic. Okay. So, I mean, all the great pieces 
had me already, but then to get to sing hymns, sing a hymn with the, the symphony. How fantastic. All right. So for folks here in the Midwest, when can we expect to see the Concordia University Irvine and hear Concordia University Irvine Symphony Orchestra? Yeah, I want to invite everyone to come out. I love that we're in St. Louis. It's kind of central. I know that we have a lot of friends and family making trips from all over the Midwest, even someone driving in from Canada. So St. Louis is, you know, it's, I guess it's always been the, the center of the United States. So a lot of people are coming in Saturday, February 25th, three o'clock, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Collinsville. Sunday, February 26th, we'll be in morning worship services at Peace, Peace Lutheran Church in St. Louis. We'll be joined by our chief mission officer, Reverend Dr. Stephen Mueller. He'll be preaching in the evening at six o'clock. We'll be at Zion Lutheran Church in St. Charles on Sunday, February 26th. Then on Monday, we'll be at Lutheran High North and Lutheran High South. On Tuesday morning, we'll be at the seminary and we'll be playing music for chapel, a new orchestration of morning prayer liturgy. And that will be followed by a short after chapel concert. And again, Dr. Mueller will be preaching. And then we'll close the tour at First Presbyterian Church of Kirkwood. And we're really honored to be a part of their Conspirito concert series. That'll be at 7.30 on February 28th. It's a long list. I, I, somebody could go to all of these if they were really excited about this. But a lot of great venues, a, a lot of different ways to hear the orchestra performing and to be able to experience this music. It's very exciting to have Irvine coming out here. Uh, like we said, do doesn't happen very often. Are there any other uh, Concordia Irvine music events happening? And how else can we learn more about the music program at Irvine? Well, you can get a list of all these concerts by going to cui.edu slash tickets. Uh, we welcome you to see our full list of everything we do. I know you have a national audience, some people out on the West Coast listening. We're excited. Next week, we're going to be bringing out one of the most internationally recognized choral organizations today, Voces 8. We'll be on our campus as guest artists next week. That's going to be really thrilling. And we have big concerts happening all the time. Our Concordia Choir is going to be doing Handel's Messiah later this year. Just some amazing things always. Mm, what's coming up in April might be worth a trip to Irvine it might be <laughs> it is for a lot of people it's always fun to see how many people come out <laughs> our guest today Dr. Jeff Held professor of music and music director of the orchestras at Concordia University Irvine Dr. Held thanks so much for sharing this great upcoming tour with us here on the coffee hour thank you so much God bless y'all you're listening to the coffee hour I'm Andy Bates I'm Sarah Golseth 